Hello and welcome back to Vibas. You're still here with myself, Sharita, as well as Daryl. Now, Daryl, I don't know if you caught um, the interview on Vibas last month where we mm -hmm. spoke to Fadli Bakhtiar from the Eco Knights as well as Rashwin from BGBG Initiative. They were talking to us about um, the KKL Eco Film Festival right. because throughout the month of October, the 10th Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Festival has been showcasing the remarkable works of local and international filmmakers, including our next guest. Wong Jinxian is the filmmaker behind The Change Is Now, the documentary that follows two people who take on a zero waste challenge, while Shanjeev Reddy is one of the folks behind The Elephant in Our Room, a short film about the conflict between the pachyderms and the orang asli. Now, we sit down with the both of them to find out more about their venture into filmmaking. Welcome to Vibaz. Hi. Hi. Hey guys. All right, so first off, congratulations for having your films showcased you so at much. the uh, Eco Festival. Um, but I want to ask you, Jinsen, first of all, why do you think it's important to have films about environmental issues showcased? Um, I guess um, environmental communication is um, is actually mob it is the key to mobilize the people mm -hmm. to actually know more about the environmental issues and. Apparently, a lot of Malaysians are unaware of yeah. mm. what's happening, but there's a lot of figures happening. But mm -hmm. um, through films like environmental issues and stuff, it actually brings a bigger picture for them to know what's happening and mm -hmm. what's the consequences, yeah, sure. at, uh, what they're doing. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Just as simple as plastic bags, mm -hmm. carpooling, mm -hmm. yeah. like that. simple yeah. things, of course. And Sean, how do you think films can impact people differently from other mediums? Well, to begin with film, I believe mm -hmm. a personal bias is perhaps the best uh, medium mm -hmm. to tell a story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it, it pretty much puts you in a location that mm -hmm. you weren't at prior or you've never been to prior. So right. um, with, with our story especially because it was filmed in the, in the you know, remote forests of Malaysia, uh, it's, it's definitely uh, not somewhere somebody would ideally want right. to visit yeah. or something like yeah. that. So, uh, film helped me tell that story very uh, mm. efficiently. I guess it transports us to the location Correct. on site and to witness it for ourselves firsthand. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess through our eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you first, when did you first uh, get into filmmaking, and is this something that you look to continue doing? Um, okay, the first part. Um, yeah, I actually started off when I was studying three years ago back in uh, Taylor's University and okay. I just graduated actually. Okay. So I was taking up uh, mass communication and majoring in broadcasting itself mm -hmm. and um, I didn't actually look or actually glimpse for other subjects mm -hmm. um, like broadcasting is the only thing that I wanted mm -hmm. to do. Mm. So carry on like after three years I'm still pursuing like broadcasting. Right. So that's when where I started off loving and liking that's the only thing that I w know I wanted to mm, do. You found your passion and your yeah, true definitely. calling from there. So until now, yeah, definitely um, I'm looking into in the future in okay. doing more films or awesome. photos as well. Anything related to stills or moving right. mm. images. And Sean, what about you? I I studied a little bit of film in in school, mm -hmm. and then for m many years I didn't do anything about it. Right. And then I got employed at Rage yeah. at the Star, and uh, that's been great. Mm -hmm. I pretty much went in not knowing anything at all, mm -hmm. and I've been thought well, I've been groomed well, right. and uh, so that's uh, nearing three years now. So yeah. Okay. Nice. Why do you feel like this is something that you want to keep doing? <sighs> it's very hard to convince people these days, like mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> And, and as a journalist, I feel it's it's important to be unbiased, but at the same time, you adhere to a narrative, and, yeah. and that's what you're trying to tell people. And mm. and everybody, you know the saying, you know, the expression, uh, screenshot, it didn't happen, mm. right? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So, I, I, I feel like uh, the best way to, 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 to tell somebody that something happened was to show it to them, like, you know. Mm. So. All right, mm. yeah, that's fair enough. Now, yeah. before we speak about your films at the KL um, EFF, mm -hmm. let's speak a little bit first about some of the other projects that you've worked on that you're particularly proud of. Maybe Zinjian, we'll start with you. Um, okay, <laughs> Mo most of um, the projects that uh, we have done are mostly group projects. Okay. So it will be a bit biased to say, like, wh whichever is like the best or, mm -hmm. okay. or I guess um, the ones that are nearly or the latest ones yeah. are pretty much um, fair enough to say it's, it's 
it's okay. It's all, okay. It's all it's equally all right. important, yeah. all equally good. But if I would have to choose like one particularly, there's one that uh, was done individually mm-hmm. last year. Is actually regarding um, a film to actually you have to shoot a film in uh, one minute and thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, uh, to actually present the essence of sound of a city. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was actually <coughs> carried out by Dolby. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we have to shoot a film, but visually as well as um, sound. Okay. Mm-hmm. But the essence has to be the sound, and uh, it happens that uh, I got a ticket, a uh, return ticket to LA mm-hmm. because of that. Like won the competition. Oh, That's con- actually a competition. Congrats! So, and so, what about you, Sanjeev? Yeah. Uh, okay. Likewise, we I also work in a group setup. Yeah. Uh, but hands down. It has to be this project uh, called Predator in my phone. Okay. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it, but Hi. basically, um, we pretty much hunt down uh, pedophiles. Okay. And um, and we brought these cases, and we we worked with the police from right. the get go. Okay. Um, they helped us with the statistics, where to look, and it turns out a lot of these issues were because of um, social interaction via the internet. Mm-hmm. Right. Kids are just exposed to the internet, and they were mm. getting hung up with these things, and mm. then um, and we brought this to the government. And fast forward, to, fast forward to today, we actually have laws uh, to protect our mm. children. Yeah. That's co- that's cool because you know mm. that that is one topic that yeah. I think, it, particularly in our country, there's mm-hmm. not much awareness and not much light shed on that. And, and a film about it, yeah. would, would a project about yes. it, would be great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now let's go back to your short films or your projects that you worked on for the KLE FF. Um, mm-hmm. Jin Xiang, what led you to focus on uh, waste consumption in changes now? Okay, um, so basically KLEFF surrounds the theme of uh, environmental issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we'll actually stumble upon a few ideas and we wanted to do something actually apart from like film, traditional film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we did something which uh, surrounds vlogging style. Mm-hmm. Right. It's more natural, more spontaneous, more raw. Right. So, um, and we actually stumbled upon a few ideas whether we're going to do a wastage or a water wastage mm-hmm. or actually money wastage. Okay. And, so yeah. how did you settle upon the idea of two people taking the no waste challenge? Actually for wastage and uh, particularly in any rubbish or mm-hmm. etc. It's more visible for the mm-hmm. audience so we're right. thinking to okay. actually compare to like water or right. money. Right. So we actually chose that to be okay. our theme in the whole video. So that actually settled down for us to do that. Okay, and, and of course you had two characters in the film, yeah. uh, Natalie and Josh. Yep. Um, what were some of the rules that both these characters had to adhere to? Okay, so um, basically everything is pretty spontaneous and just uh, visualizing and shooting whatever you are happening. But mm-hmm. uh, we actually set out a few rules which you, you have to shoot um, your breakfast, your lunch as well as dinner and mm-hmm. just add on a simple exercise or something interesting to actually spice up the whole video. Right. Mm-hmm. And from there and we just do a post production and whether are we gonna use it or not just for I wouldn't say entertainment purposes but for just to spice up the whole video. Okay. okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And from there actually uh, it came out that um, Natalie sets as a medium which she will be doing a daily lifestyle Mm -hmm. naturally Mm -hmm. and Josh, the other hand, will be uh, saving as much wastage as possible. And you were telling Mm -hmm. me earlier that this this, uh, project or this this social experiment ran for a week. Was that enough time to get the results that you required? Actually, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Just in the period of a week, actually we can see a fairly big comparison and results Mm -hmm. regarding Natalie um, for Natalie, in just a day, mm-hmm. the wastage is actually equals to a week. What's Josh? Wow! Yeah. So, yes. what's Josh have been saving for the whole week? Okay. So, mm-hmm. fair enough. You can see uh, in a week actually it's it was enough a, time. It was yeah, enough time. Okay. There's a very wow. big difference. I think difference. that's what's so great about you know making um, films like this because you really get. A real message, and mm. it's you know it, it resonates with a lot of us because a lot yeah. of us can relate to Josh and Natalie mm. in their yeah, lifestyle. Yeah. So you know it kind of makes us sit back and take a look at what we're doing. Definitely. But Shan, could you explain to us a little <laughs> bit more about what the elephant in our room is about? Interesting fact: uh, we didn't pursue that story, and that's that's not the main reason we went there. We mm-hmm. actually were pursuing a separate story, and this pretty much fell on our laps because mm-hmm. um, my colleague and I, my uh, senior producer, and I had to put up a couple of nights with the uh, orang asal mm-hmm. uh, okay. in the forest and uh, the first night I heard that you know there was a little, little commotion in the nearby village and the following day we found out that that particular village had elephants uh, 
come rampage uh, through it, and, mm -hmm. and so we paid a visit. And that's how we found out that turns out translocated elephants, elephants that have been moved into state parks, mm -hmm. uh, become really restless very quickly. They try yeah. to find their ways home, yeah. and um, and uh, quick fix would be plantation of, yeah. of food that the orang asal have. Yeah, and naturally they come and and cuss, uh, you know. Cause havoc. Uh, yeah, so. you know the thing is, what I find with films, especially with films with a strong message like this, um, it's sometimes tough to keep our audience engaged with us. Mm -hmm. Right? We, you got to have a certain element of entertainment or com comedy or something of that sort to keep our audience continuously watching. How did you manage to do this with your film? Good question. Man. Uh, again, it pretty much fell on our laps because, like I mentioned prior. Mm -hmm. uh, a village nearby got ransacked the night yep, before, yep. the following day, mm -hmm. our village got ransacked. Oh no. Believe, believe you me, I, I <laughs> removed my contact lenses and stuff and I was pretty much settled in, f you know, I, we, we were living in little huts, right? Right. So, um, there's a shot of me in my singlet, it was pretty much my nightie because oh, no. I was making me a peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> jelly sandwich and that was what I was going to have for supper. And yeah. Mind you, this was around 7 because when the sun goes down, it's lights out, there's no electricity mm. in there. Mm. And then this, uh, this, you know, this kid comes up to us and he's like, you've you got to come check this. And mm. then when we, when we follow him, we see an elephant like, you know, just eating, mm. uh, you know, uh, in the vicinity. Mm -hmm. And before we knew it, like our cameras are facing the elephant, and before we knew it, the elephant turned around and started charging at us. Wow. And yeah, I pretty much ran to save my life and we used, yep. we used yep. portions of that clip at the very beginning to keep the audience enticed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So that kinda, That's so... I, I don't know, it's very contradictory to all these opinions I have had uh, previously about elephants. You mm -hmm. assume they're very peaceful, um, they don't look for conflict, but mm. you know, as we can see, these certain situations have forced them to act this way. Yeah. And, yeah. You yeah. know, this film highlights how dangerous human-animal conflict has become. Um, and your team did spend several days, as you mentioned, um, living amongst the Orang Asal. Mm -hmm. Was that the most dangerous situation you found yourself in, or were there other chaotic um, situations that came about? You mean in my experience at yeah. which or particularly then? Whilst you were at the village. Uh, yeah, like ever since that happened, uh, we were all, you know, uh, like we had our guards up mm -hmm. because every person, and we kept hearing horror stories because there have been cases in the past where because of uh, said conflict, people mm -hmm. have died. Oh, uh, wow. So, yeah, I was on my toes throughout ever since that happened, mm -hmm. but that was the closest call uh, pretty mm -hmm. much, you know. Okay. Because we ran towards a river and, and afterwards uh, had the elephant approached us yeah. even more, yeah. we, would, we would have had to swim to yeah. rescue well, ourselves. Let's hope that any of the future projects you are involved with doesn't have to <laughs> uh, get you involved in laying your life down yeah. on the line. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, do tell us, uh, what are you working on next? Okay, uh, the current project we're working on, it's ongoing, you guys have to uh, look it up. The mm -hmm. first episode's out, second episode's uh, second, ep second episode will be out in a couple of weeks. It's about it's called student traffic. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's basically uh, let me see that again. Sorry. Uh, um, it's called student traffic. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's it's how uh, kids are recruited to study tertiary education yeah. in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, when they come here, they find that their colleges are ill-equipped. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or pretty much do not have classes whatsoever. Okay. And, and, uh, okay how that's that's going to be something interesting to yeah, look at, I feel. And what about you, Jinx? Yeah? Um, I guess now I just gr I just graduated, actually. So mm -hmm. okay. Good pretty much I'm kind of laying back now. Mm -hmm. And I'm heading to the States next month. So pretty, uh, hopefully I'm going to get some nice things happening in uh, the States. And came back. I'm planning to actually pursuing in uh, production as well. Awesome. And... Hopefully I hope you keep spreading making. these messages and yes. creating films of this yeah. caliber. That that's yeah, awesome yeah. that you guys are doing this right now. Yes. Thank you so much for Thank joining us today. Thanks. Thanks for it's having been awesome been having you here. Thank you. You know what? Um, even though you know it, they did find themselves in some dangerous situations. Mm. It is, of course, part um, of good journalistic practice and to kind of go the lengths to get the story so that you can kind of perpetuate the message that needs to get out there. Yeah. Like, I had no idea that, you know, elephants were being driven to act against their instincts and be so aggressive, mm, you know? Mm, so, agreed. you know, I, I, we should keep having Definitely. Um, films I, like I this. I like that our, our new yeah. filmmakers are, are taking on this approach as well, yeah. uh, or Great continuing work. this tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome stuff. Now, next week, guys, on VBuzz, uh, Movember is upon us, and we do our part to contribute to men's health awareness with Dr. Agilan Arjunan, who tells us more about male 
infertility. Mm -hmm. And you may have heard about both the Malaysian men and women's dodgeball teams taking home the gold at the recent World Championships. And we sit down with one of the men who coached them to their win. As always, guys, keep writing to us at vbuzz at astro.com.my and keep up with us on our Instagram handle at Astro mm -hmm. Now, before we let you go, we just want to let you know about a new game show where contestants could stand a chance to win a brand new car. But the big question is, are you smart enough? We'll find out if a group of college and university students have what it takes on a unique quiz show. It's held on board a 15-foot truck. Contestants will try and out with each other to win cash prizes and ultimately a Proton Iris car. Pretty awesome. Tune in to Astro Vinmin Channel 231 at 8 p.m. on Sunday to, uh, on the 5th of November to catch the intense intellectual competition on Smart Wheel. Now, my name is Daryl Baptist. And I'm Sharita. Have, Have a great a night. Have a great weekend, guys.